much to take for another fabulous speech, and I now call on Patrick McDonough, who's a PhD student in history, to address the society. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank you firstly to thank Luke and Ursula for inviting me and Chris for introducing me. Obviously, no pressure now following up on that speech. <laughs> so um, you may be forgiven for thinking not another Northerner speaking this evening, and I won't be the last, I think, either. Now, now I'm Patrick McDonough. I'm a second-year PhD student in medieval history. I will not be speaking about that, if you're worried. I'm also a traveller. Now, to start off, when I was a child, in fact, when I was, when I was 10 years old, I sat at the 11 plus, which was, at that time, it was a, an educational exam you, you need to sit for secondary schools. And I got a B1 in it, so I went to the local Christian Brothers Grammar School in Oma. And I remember at the time a story that my mom has sort of told me since that she was talking to another local mother with a child, I believe, at a similar age to myself. And my mother was actually quite annoyed with this other person because they were quite surprised that I got, actually got it into the grammar school. Obviously, what the, what the inference was wasn't very hard to piece together. Now, I also imagine for many of my friends in Trinity, which I think I have, and people who, who at least who knew me in Trinity, that it, it also probably came as a surprise that I was a traveller. Not least because, firstly, I never opened with it, but also perhaps as well, I don't have a traveller accent, as I hope is not too surprising. My accent is rather strongly, some would say, northern, something my six years in Dublin has done nothing to weaken. And, and, as, and I think what perhaps most importantly of all was the location. We were in Trinity. It's not, it's not somewhere one imagines you would see many travellers. And it's not an, an incorrect view. Now, and that sort of, I think, in some ways brings me to what I want to talk about. Now, I was lately told that the official number of travellers in Trinity, I think, can be counted on one hand, perhaps two, officially. I, according to the National Roman Traveller Strategy Reports plan, there is 13% of Irish travellers in the Republic of Ireland who complete secondary education, and I think 1% have completed third level. The current plan, strategy plan is there is for there to be 80 travellers in third level education by next year, a number that I'm not very confident will be met, but of course I would like to be proven wrong on that. I think even for myself, I think I'm currently, I think anyways, the only traveller post-grad or at least PhD in Trinity. Uh, there has only been one other that I know of traveller who has graduated PhD in Ireland, Cindy Joyce. Of course, there's also Rosalind McDonough, who did her undergrad and master's here, and she's recently got one from Northumbria University. But essentially, of course, the numbers are very minuscule to non-existence. And so it's what my vision for a future Ireland, this, this island, is that in 20 or 30 years' time, that I can look back at this phase in some ways as a transitional period in the future of travellers, that there will come a point where the fact that I am here speaking in my capacity as a traveller isn't needed, that it won't be noteworthy or even remarked upon that a traveller is in an education, perhaps the same way in the his, you now have female members of the committee, which I'm told even 50 years ago was still illegal in the society, yet no one would, would they pass the thought after being a female auditor or committee member. That sense of it's not even worth asking about. And perhaps Prematurely, but well, I hope not. I think I've, I'm hopeful for the future, I think, at this point. And I think there are matters in place that I hope will at least push it forward. C currently, before the doll, whenever we have a government, there's a bill that was brought forward, that was passed in the, the Shannon, the Traveller History and Culture Bill, which was spearheaded by Senator Cada Callagher, who invited me for several times last year to speak in the Shannon debates. And which I think, which if passed, will mean that traveller history will now be part of the Irish curriculum, which I think is a good step forward. But on its own, I don't think it's enough. My vision for, a, in, in a short to medium term policy action, would essentially be the creation of a national system of scholarships dedicated at travellers, i.e., maintenance. And maintenance fee grants and even accommodation support for third level education and that to be linked with a si again nationally led a, s a series of career outlook sort of career talks as you will 
deliberately going to secondary schools with high proportions of traveller students in the age groups between 10 years old and 14 years old. The age group that I think is the most crucial in terms of the attrition of travellers from the educational system. And the point of these talks essentially is to show in some ways the educational benefit of an education, the career opportunities they can bring you, the higher socioeconomic outcome of it, and partly because, because this information is not readily available in the traveller community, where it is not done, it is not normal. It's, people do not have sort of the life experience or at least the experience of others to rely upon to communicate this to them. And I think these two policies have to happen in conjunction. I don't think it is worthwhile, if not pointless, to offer the scholarship alone, but gone to no efforts to reach out to young travellers 10 to 14 to tell them if they, if they stay on to enter an evening search, this is a way of going forward. Likewise, I don't think there's any point offering false hope when they're 10 to 14, but not them providing a means of support when they're actually at that age where it's actually important. And what my hope for that would be is the creation of a critical mass of Irish travellers in third level education till the point where it becomes practical. Because at the point, me being here essentially means nothing. It likely will not encourage many others to go on because there's too few. I'm currently, I'm currently still too random from the norm for this to be in any ways a meaningful thing. Whereas if there were hundreds, then obviously it's a different thing because then you're actually properly supposed to be generational change. And I think, for me, I think that would be the way forward. Now, I have a relatively short speech, partly because I'm aware of only five minutes and I'm rapidly running out here. But if I had more time, perhaps I would discuss traveller identity in relation to the two Irish states, my own ambiguous relation with that. I mean, six years ago when I started university, I was an ethnic minority group in Northern Ireland, but only a social minority group in the Republic of Ireland. And while I have no problem saying I'm Irish, it is after all the first word of Irish traveller. That, for me, never always meant necessarily a loyalty to an Irish state that I never had seen as necessarily good towards travellers. Yet, my focus on education in part because it's what I, can most, I feel most qualified to speak on. And I believe that in the past, at least in the past hundred years of modern European and world history, it's been one of the greatest changes of societal change. I don't think it might be too controversial to, to suggest that the formation of the Northern Irish Civil Rights Association in the 1960s, NICRA, can, can in some ways be linked to the passing of the Education Bill of 1947, which facilitated the access for Catholics to, tertiary, to secondary and tertiary education. Change comes to all peoples and societies. I can think of no people or society in the grand sweep of history that has not been unmodified by the passing of time. Ireland, the settled community before me, and travellers I think must all embrace that change. The only time, the best time to act as always is now. And thank you for coming.